In this video, we're going to look at four examples of comparing fractions to one another. So in each of these cases, we're going to want to know whether the first fraction is less than, greater than, or equal to the second fraction. Now sometimes you can just look at the two fractions involved, and it's quite obvious. I think that the first example, it should be really clear to us that 3 quarters is greater than 2 fifths. I think about three quarters is definitely bigger than half, right? And two fifths is definitely less than half. And so just because they're so far apart, we can probably just look at them um, and take them at face value and say which one is bigger or smaller. But it's not always going to be obvious. The next three I don't think are really obvious as to which is bigger, which is smaller. And so when it's not obvious, we can follow this guideline up here says to compare two fractions, rewrite them so that the denominator of each is the least common denominator. So we've already looked at this idea of least common denominator. We've, we've worked on finding the least common denominator of two fractions. Here we're going to actually put it into some practice. I'd already mentioned that we're going to use the concept in addition and subtraction of fractions. Um, but here's another case where we're going to see it put into practice. So I'm looking at 11 sixteenths and 2 thirds. And to me it's not at all obvious which is bigger, which one's smaller. So um, let's remember uh, uh, one of our tricks for finding the least common denominator is if you notice that both numbers, um, or I should say each number has nothing in common with the other number besides 1. In other words, there's no greatest common factor um, besides 1 then all we have to do to find the least common denominator is to take the product of those two. So we just take 16 times 3, just multiply them. When we do that, we get 48. So what I know now is that I want to rewrite 11 sixteenths, so it has a 48 on the bottom. I want to write, rewrite 2 thirds, so it has a 48 on the bottom. All right. So then we have to think about, okay, how did I go from 16 to 48? Well, because of the fact that we made 48 by taking 16 times 3, it should be obvious that we multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 3 to make it have a 48 on the bottom. So 11 times 3 is 33, so this becomes the fraction 33 48 and then we do the same thing with 2 thirds. Since I multiplied 3 by 16 to make 48, I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom of this by 16. And 2 times 16 is 32. So at this point, it should be obvious that 33 48 is bigger than 32 48. Since the denominators are the same, all you have to do is compare the tops. And so because the first fraction is greater than the second, uh, when they have the same denominator way up here, 11 sixteenths is greater than 2 thirds. Let's move to the next one. So 10 and 15 definitely share a common factor of 5, so let's go ahead and um, either prime factor or make a list of the larger multiple, and let's, let's go with that second method here. So we ask the question, does 10 go into 15? And the answer is no, uh, not evenly. And so we look at 15 times 2, which is 30. Does 10 go into 30? You bet. So we understand that 30 is the LCD. And so I need to rewrite 7 tenths, so it has a 30 on bottom. I need to write, rewrite 11 fifteenths, so it has a 30 on bottom. And so... Uh, we say, what do I have to do to 10 to make it into 30? Well, of course, multiply it by 3. So if you multiply the bottom by 3, you better multiply the top by 3. So I get uh, 21 thirtieths for the fraction on the left. You do the same thing with 11 fifteenths. Uh, 15 times 2 would make 30, so I better multiply the 11 by 2. So 11 times 2 is 22, and so here we can see that the first fraction is less than the second fraction when they both have a denominator of 30, so that means 
the same relationship holds up here. Finally, this last one, well, let's use the prime factoring method here. So I'll take 20, break it down, 4 times 5, 2 times 2, 8 is 4 times 2, 4 is 2 times 2. And so our LCD, oops, LCD, we're going to have 2s and 5s involved. Okay, so 2, uh, we have two twos and 20, we have three twos and eight, so that means we need three, right? We need the largest number of times it shows up for any number. We have one five and 20 and zero fives and eight, so we just need the one. And so two to the third power is eight, so eight times five is 40. So when we go to figure out how much uh, to multiply each number by, um, it should be pretty clear in this one, but I'll show you a little trick. So first of all, we understand that 2 times 20 is 40, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 2. Let me show you another kind of cool trick for figuring that out. Um, if you look at your least common denominator and compare it to uh, the prime factorization of 20, you can see that 20 has a 5 and the LCD has a 5. 20 has two twos and the LCD has three twos. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply 20 up here by whatever parts of the LCD don't show up in 20. So there is a single two in the LCD, right, because uh, this two cubed is really two times two times two, right? So you're going to multiply 20 by the part of the LCD that is not also in 20. So, right, we've used that, we've used that, we've used the 5, so this lone 2 is the only one we haven't used, so we multiply top and bottom by 2. You can do the same thing with the 8. Now, using your multiplication facts, hopefully you just know you're going to multiply by 5, but how do you really know that? Well, the LCD has 3 2s and a 5. All three of the twos you can find in the eight. What is the eight missing? It's missing the five, and so that's why I multiply top and bottom by five. So it's just another way of getting at the same thing, of um, figuring out that either you could take the LCD of 40 and divide it by each denominator, and that's what you multiply by, or you can do that neat little trick I just showed. But at any rate, we understand that each of these fractions need to have a 40 on bottom. 13 times 2 is 26. 5 times 5 is 25. So it's clear that the fraction on the left is greater than the fraction on the right. So up here, 13 20ths is greater than 5 eighths.